Five things you must know, understand, and consider if you are serious about having fire in your life and enjoying a long, luxurious financial independence with an early retirement. Coming from a financial planner who's part of the fire movement herself and is seriously passionate about helping make sure that you create realistic, sustainable financial freedom and independence. This is Sugar Mama TV. to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner Canna Campbell and as always please make sure you pay attention to my financial planning license details as well as my general advice warning. Now today I want to talk to you about five things you must know and understand if you are serious about having financial freedom and retiring early in your life. The other day I was preparing for a podcast on how do they afford that and we were talking about the myths and misconceptions around the FIRE movement and there are some things that just stood out to me like a sore thumb. So I thought it was great to be able to take this and make it into today's video because it's filled with so much valuable information that I think you'll be so glad that you thought about and became aware of particularly further down the track because hopefully you've taken this advice into consideration and made any necessary adjustments or tweaks to your FIRE strategy. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I want you to know and understand and consider about FIRE is FIRE is not just about saving, saving up a lump sum amount of money, say a million dollars, then living off that. If you want sustainable financial freedom and independence, you've got to be considering and including an investment strategy in your FIRE strategy. You see, when you start investing, you start increasing the opportunity for your money to work harder for you because it's not just earning interest, it's actually growing in value, capital growth over time. And and that can add a very powerful element of efficiency in your wealth creation strategy. So please note, FIRE is not mm. just about saving up lots of money as a lump sum, it's also about investing. And yes, you should also include your superannuation, your Kiwi saver, your 401k plan in your FIRE strategy because this money should definitely be invested. And it is just as important because this money from your super or wherever it may be for retirement may actually give you that extra level of longevity so that you never ever need to worry about having to return back to work. Number two, you've got to be real. So many people think, oh yes, I could easily live off $50,000 a year. That would be fine. I just need to save up a million dollars, earn 5% a year in interest, and there's my $50,000. Okay, from a top line surface level point of view, that sounds great. Don't get me wrong, $50,000 a year is a huge amount of money. But is that real for your real life? Have you factored in inflation? Have you factored in income tax? Because you're going to have to pay tax on that $50,000 every single year. Have you also considered the real cost of life? Things that need to be replaced, things that need to be upgraded, things that may break, such as home maintenance, maybe replacing cars or upgrading white good appliances. Also, have you considered things like your medical expenses? You may have an upcoming change in your your medical costs, whether it be recovery expenses or rehabilitation expenses or preventative measures. These things all cost money. Have you factored that into how much money you really actually do need? And of course, have you factored in money for travel? If you retire early, you want to make sure that you can afford to fill your days with amazing experiences. And we all know that the cost of travel has dramatically increased over the last couple of years. So make sure you are realistic about how much money you need every single year to be able to retire early. And trust me, you'll never regret overestimating it. Number three, slow and steady still wins the race. A lot of people think that FIRE strategies are about being fixated and obsessed and going really aggressively on saving. You know, having to deprive yourself of like takeaway coffees and holidays and going out to a nice restaurant and buying anything for yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. You can still be part of the FIRE community and be saving and investing on a regular basis. That is perfectly fine. Now I can share with you for myself, I'm someone who's taking the slow and steady pace. However, 
However, I have a balance with bursts and spurts where I regularly invest, but I will also give myself lots of mini aggressive challenges along the way where I try and boost the amount of money that I can put towards my investment portfolio and grow my passive income streams. So please don't think that if you want to be part of the FIRE movement, you have to literally put your life on pause where you completely become fixated and dedicated purely only to saving and investing for a short period of time. You can actually stretch this out over a long period of time and allow a healthier balance in your life. Now, a classic example I want to share with you, and I know for some people this may seem a little bit unrealistic, but bear with me while I share this example because it's quite inspiring. If you were to take, say, $10,000 and invest it, and say we assume a capital growth every year of 3.5%, and we assume a dividend yield of, say, 4%, and a growing dividend yield of 4% per annum as well. If you can invest that $10,000 plus $1,000 per month and never change that amount, so you never need to worry about investing more than $1,000, over the course of 25 years, you will have just over $1 million invested in an investment portfolio, and that would be paying you a passive income stream of over $43,800 per annum. Now, if you're looking at this going, Canna, I don't have $10,000 and I don't have $1,000 per month, that's perfectly fine. Start with whatever you have and then build your way up. So if you only have $1,000 to start with today, that's fine. And if you can only do $100 per month to invest, that's perfectly fine. Start with the habit and build upon from there. So every time you get a pay rise, perhaps you boost that amount or perhaps you get a tax refund, you can put that towards your investment portfolio. But my message is here, just start because you're creating a very powerful habit system and it is easier to build and grow from something you've already got established. All right, the fourth thing that I want you to know and understand and most definitely consider if you are part of the FIRE movement and you're working on your FIRE strategy, and that is to have emergency money set aside separate from your FIRE portfolio. We need to be realistic with things that happen in life. There are accidents, things that happen also when we least expect it. We may have a series of mini emergencies that all happen consecutively or all at the same time. So it is incredibly important that you keep your fire strategy robust and that you remain financially resilient. So by having some emergency money set aside, it means that should something happen, the financial damage from that is quarantined to the best of your ability. You never want to put yourself in a position where you have to go and sell your entire portfolio or part of your portfolio because you didn't have enough money set aside for an emergency that just suddenly happened out of the blue. Remember, things can happen in the blink of an eye. So please make sure that you have the right amount of emergency money set aside so that you never need to worry about having to crystallize a loss on your investment portfolio to meet an expense. Now, one powerful strategy that I recommend for my financial planning clients, especially ones who are approaching retirement, and that is we had this thing called a sleep well strategy. We always had set aside two years worth of living expenses held in cash. That is in an online savings account so that's earning a decent amount of interest and minimal or no fees so that should something happen, we can rely on that. And this wasn't just for emergencies. This was also for any market pullbacks or market corrections where dividends were paused or tenants were, had suddenly moved out of an investment property and they couldn't quickly find a new tenant. So by having this sleep well money, and that is two years worth of living expenses, it meant that should something happen, they can always live off that money for two years to allow the market to recover or to allow that investment to fix itself or for you to actually fix it or maybe even invest in elsewhere. You will never regret having emergency money, but most importantly, make sure it's the right amount of emergency money for your situation. And then the fifth and the most important thing that I want you to know and understand and consider if you are part of the FIRE strategy, and that is to make sure that your passive income stream, no matter where it comes from, is growing and keeping up with inflation and of course takes into consideration tax. One of the biggest concerns I have with the FIRE strategy for people who are building up a lump sum amount of money through savings and they intend in living off that money and eating into the capital over time is that that 
income may actually not keep up with the cost of living. This has been particularly evident over the last couple of years with rising interest rates and of course the rising cost of living. People have quickly realized that their money is being eaten away very, very quickly because the interest that they were earning, say 3%, 3.5%, is actually not enough anymore to cover their cost of living. And as a result, they've had to start spending some of that capital, that is the money that they have in their savings account. And they can quickly see that one once they start eroding and eating into that capital, that portfolio starts to quickly drop in value and actually doesn't have that longevity there for you. So this is why it's so important that when you're looking at your FIRE strategy, you look at your passive income sources and some, yes, hopefully are diversified, but you look at them and go, okay, is this a passive income stream that actually will grow and will it keep up with inflation and will it allow me to be able to, to safely meet my tax responsibilities and obligations? And even even better, will it actually exceed those limits so that I never actually need to ever worry about not having enough passive income to cover my living expenses and my financial independence. Now to share with you a little bit about my FIRE strategy, my goal is actually focused around a passive income goal. I do not want to build up a lump sum amount of money to then eat into that over time. I want sustainable, indefinite financial freedom and independence. That means earning enough passive income so that I never touch the capital in my investment portfolio. And my ultimate goal is to build up enough passive income so that it pays me and my family in excess of $200,000 a year. Because for us, $200,000 a year will mean that we can meet our tax responsibilities, we can ensure wonderful experiences which include international travel. It also means that there'll be a little bit of money left over that we can reinvest back into our portfolio. And of course, that it more than covers the cost of living, even if inflation Inflation continues to grow over time. Now, I have been working on this for a long time. In fact, I started investing when I was about 19 and I've remained committed and dedicated. However, I've never been going aggressively all at one time. This has definitely been a slow and steady process for me. And I'm so glad I've taken this because I've still allowed a great sense of balance in my life where I've still been able to go on holidays. I've still been able to buy nice things to myself. I've been able to, I guess, make sure I've got things in check in a nice, calm, responsible way. And I still feel good about myself in honoring my financial well-being. So for anyone who's part of the FIRE movement, good on you. I welcome you and I am most definitely a part of this. I think it's a very powerful, important movement that you're a part of. But please make sure that you look at this realistically. You understand the importance of having sustainable financial freedom and independence. You understand the value of having emergency money. You understand all the responsibilities of tax. You understand the economic conditions like inflation and that you know what you're doing is going to serve you today and well into the future because it's about being sustainably financially free and independent with that incredibly important ingredient of longevity and sustainability. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you are subscribed. And of course, let me know what video you'd like me to record next, because don't forget this channel is directed by you, your needs, your wants to help make sure that your financial journey is a successful one.